Tri-City Sports now, Marky Bilson looking really forward to about 15 minutes from now when I'll be talking baseball with uh, J Josh Brown of Nakahoma Nation. Braves, since the Austin Riley has come in, they've been hot. They were a 10-1 winner yesterday. So, anyway, I uh, did want to, let's see here, let me give you a few things. You heard the sports update about ETSU, and boy, are they dropping like a brick. I don't see really any hope of them moving up in the standings in their sixth-place position right now. And, of course, this series with Samford that they're playing in Johnson City was supposed to be the uh and he had, they say he had his pitch count after two innings. Modern day baseball, you'll see this trend. I think it'll come to the major leagues. I don't have a problem with the opener. What I would like to see, though, this is what I do have a problem with the DH, is that I do see that probably in 10, 20 years, we won't really have a starting pitcher. Certainly they're not designed to go nine now, but uh, we'll probably see somebody who wants to go, th like three pitchers going three innings. And... Owners will like that because they won't have to pay the pitchers as much. Universal DH. And then there'll be this feel. Why are they taking a pitch count? And then it just seems like baseball players are wimps. This isn't going to be good for the sport. What I think would be good if you were going to have this is the pinch hitter. And okay, you'll have more players in the roster, but that's the thing. That's the caveat you give the players union, in my opinion you have say a 30-man roster instead of 25 now yes without a dh or starting pitchers you have a game of strategy and it will become hey look what and you'll have a full bench and yeah you can choose at that point and i mean look it used to be that every you know every team had a quote-unquote pinch hitter or even a utility guy that had some kind of glamour I mean, Lenny Harris or Manny Moda or somebody, but it was somebody that a lot of times it was an aging veteran. You know, Willie McCovey. I mean, you want to go way, way back, and he wasn't performing all that well, but I do know that, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have pinch hitters like, you know, uh, Chuck Klein or somebody like that's really way back. But no, you'd, you'd have somebody like, let's say you finish your career out. Uh, kind of as a reserve, but boy, you know, you didn't want to face the proud old veteran with two outs in ninth and tying run on. And he was hitting. And you don't have that now. I'd like to see that strategic element of the game come about. Uh, and you know what? I will also say this, that oh, then maybe there can be some sort of control on ticket prices. Because, yeah, they're not coming. And the attendance is just way, 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 way down. But I would like, I'd also like to see DH absolutely go the way of the Dodo in college baseball because they only got 12.7 scholarships. And to try to put 10 players on a field instead of nine, that's a big thing. Actually, I'd like to see literally an insult to the sport that you have such few amount, so few baseball scholarships. There should be more scholarships in 12.7. And usually, uh, a lot of times, schools, they will, uh, that's where they'll, you know, cut back on. So, you tell me. Uh, we were talking a little bit about here, too. The Predators power play was one of the worst in the NHL, and they're talking a little bit about having a new... Uh, they're talking a little bit about having a new uh, power play coach, if you will. Anything can help, I suppose. Bill. I mentioned that because, uh, you know, the Nashville Predators do seem, we at uh, Trotz or Lavely Alette, to hold on to their coach far longer than most college, or listen to me, college, most hockey teams will do. I'm, my, I'm scattered those that aren't coming to mind. But no, look for the Predators. Here's the thing. And I think, yeah, hey, you might as well try something. Predators don't like to fire the head coach, so adding on another assistant, a power play coach, could be a trend if it works. You know, what do you got to lose? And another one about Drew Locke coming to the Denver Broncos. And Joe Flacco was a little bit cool on saying, I'll be his mentor. Because you know what Joe Flacco wants? He wants a second Super Bowl ring. Comes to a team with a good defense. 
Denver Broncos. They do go to Super Bowls. And the idea of, oh, yes, let that second-round draft choice take my job away. Not necessarily what they want to do. However, this interesting, Drew Locke says Joe Flacco has, quote, been great to me. Hmm. And in fact, Locke and fellows Broncos brought a shuttle accident while flying from Los Angeles International Airport in Denver on Thursday morning. The shuttle hit something. Locke, Font, and everyone else was fine. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, a lot of people, but no, that's kind of intriguing. And it also is a good sign. I think Locke will be, uh, do quite well. And you know that he's not willing to call out the veteran also, yeah, well, he's not in a position to do so, but that's the way you handle this. I mentioned before, Doug Flutie, when he was with the Chargers, uh, that, that was a guy who did not want to mentor other quarterbacks. No, if it's Buffalo, if it's San Diego, no, I'm not here to be the coach. I'm here to be the quarterback. Doug Flutie was very famous for doing that. Of course, Locke, though, saying, no, no, wait, he's been, he's been fine with me. No, no, no problem there. No problem there. Of course, the big news that came out this morning, Grant Williams will enter the NBA draft. And so that means it is Black Friday for the Tennessee Volunteers basketball team. Uh, frankly, they have no one in the post. Uh, you know, the road to success for Tennessee basketball now goes through Kingsport. With when it was called upon him, to replace Kyle Alexander. However, there was a bit of good news for local college basketball fans as ETSU announced that they're going to bring in Charlie Weber from Alexandria, Virginia. He played for John Wooten, son of Morgan Wooten at Bishop O'Carroll High in Harley Skeeter Swift's hometown of Alexandria, Virginia. He's a six foot nine forward. Excuse me, 55% from the field, 48% from the three-point range. So there was a talk about the big man that was coming to campus, Charlie Weber. That's who it is. Out of LA. Only problem, only averaged 13 points a game on his high school team. But then again, it was a pretty good high school team. So it wasn't like one guy carrying the load. I'm Marky Bilson. When we return, it will be Josh Brown, not combination. We got a lot to talk about with baseball. I got a historical note that actually deals with Unicoi County and Irwin that happened 40 years ago today. And I'm going to begin the segment with Josh Brown on that. Plus, we'll talk about Austin Riley, the shift of Sean Newcomb to the bullpen, and all things hardball when we return on Tri-City Sports Now. <laughs> 